I'm joined now by Robert McFadden, former Deputy Assistant Director of NCIS Counterintelligence Operations, now a Senior Vice President of the SUFAN Group. Bob, uh, this individual had come to the attention of the FBI. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming that plenty of individuals come to the attention of the FBI. Uh, he'd been living here, they had been living here for over a decade, had not been involved in any kind of serious criminality. Did the FBI really drop the ball here, or is it perfectly understandable as to why nothing was pursued? No indication what's coming out right now in, in the public uh, realm that the FBI dropped the ball. Knowing about these, these types of things, working with the FBI, my former organization, NCIS, when a request comes in through foreign liaison like that, in this case it was the Russian FSB, the rough equivalent of the FBI, a lot of it, most of it depends on how much information was provided in the lead how compelling it was. From what we've heard, heard so far, the FBI went by procedure, conducted the, or conducted the interviews, uh, checked the database, all the indices, then went back to for foreign liaison and said, what else was there? And apparently there was nothing any more compelling. But what can you hope to achieve simply by interviewing a couple of individuals who are not going to tell you anything more? There's no warrant to mm -hmm. search their premises. What else can you gather? Sure. sure. Well, it's not just those individuals, depending on the, the depth of the lead that, that came in. It would be interviews of friends, associates, uh, teachers, family members. But, but in this case, until we hear otherwise, I mean, I would take it in good faith that a thorough look was done. And what we heard earlier today, there are different thresholds of this kind of lead and, and investigation. There's a, an assessment, a preliminary uh, investigation, and a full investigation. In this case, what we're hearing, it was that lowest threshold. Now, Senator Lindsey Graham is saying that there was misspelled paperwork in the form of misspelled names, which resulted in a failure to follow up these individuals. Is it really possible that a simple spelling error may have caused a breakdown in the communication here? I, short answer, I don't know in this case. However, I, I will tell you that uh, transliteration, like in, uh, in particular from Arabic, for example, translated in English and vice versa, at times can cause confusion to the system, but usually not a massive breakdown. But doesn't this also highlight a more serious issue, which is the relationship between intelligence agencies here and Russia, and perhaps a lack of cooperation between the two? Well, uh, at least through my time in government, um, with, with most allied countries and even nominal allies, uh, at, at the law enforcement level and, and intel, usually quite good. It's kind of a, a comrade in arms type approach. There is the however, though, Martin, sometimes there are political considerations. We don't know if we have that here. But, but a, in this case, if there was something really compelling on the Russian side, it brings up the question, why was he allowed to travel to Russia? Why was he not stopped there? And why was not, for example, a notice put in Interpol to alert other countries about what they had? One person we haven't heard much from is Tamerlan's wife. Mm -hmm. What sort of picture do we get of her and what potential information could she provide? Well, of course, a key potential witness. Immediate family members helped paint that 360 degree profile of, of what happened from the time of the event backwards. Here's a big however to consider though, okay? Not saying this is associated with the old Al-Qaeda, but, but like-minded groups tend to pull good tactics off the shelf. In the case of the old Al-Qaeda under bin Laden, they were the masters of compartmentalization. We might not be surprised if he kept that information, uh, if not all information, from his wife. Now, there's the possibility of the other that, that she may in some ways have been, been winning, but I wouldn't be surprised, though. Again, if, if he had training, that type of training, they're very good at uh, the need to know. But this is an individual that he had a relatively long relationship with, and you're suggesting that he might have been able to hide everything from her. Any of his inclinations of hatred towards America, if he had that feeling towards America, he would have hidden it all. Yeah, these, these are the kind of things that invariably are, are being figured out right now. What happens, though, often in a situation like this, if, if again, hypothetical, if someone is very good at compartmenting things, yeah. in retrospect, indicators may come out that a wife, even a brother, immediate family or neighbors really weren't witting to or aware of. But then after the fact, it starts to come together that this may have been that. And that's what, uh, you know, in putting a, an investigation together like this, it will build the complete picture. And I know for the viewers, it's probably, well, that's all in good to figure out what happened up to the event. But, you know, these are the type of things that law enforcement intelligence will use to help 
build better security for the future. But right now, it'll be really interesting to see what the relationship was with the wife up to the time of the event. Uh, some of the triggers of behavior, for example, when we're hearing, and this is just from open source reporting, that there was a, uh, let, let's say, a more radical approach to the tenets of his faith. And over that timeline, what were some of those triggers of behavior that may give an indication of what, what, what caused it to go from taking the narrative of violence, if it happened that way, and then taking the constructive act toward violence? Is it your view that these two were largely unattached, as you look at the available evidence uh, and available to all of us? Is it your view that they were unattached to any major terrorist organization? Uh, at this Are there point, any signs that you that suggest to you that they may have been linked, coached, uh, provided with munitions by an organization? Yeah, and besides, uh, are there other acts uh, already in play? That that is absolutely the question. Look, what we have right now is a period of travel with a lot of questions, an ability to link up with with groups, or in, in a lot of the cases, Martin, especially in the post 9/11 environment, you have an individual that essentially self-motivates, self-recruits, despite the popular conception that there's shadowy figures to recruit young men in. Typically, they're self-motivated and recruit, go on their vision quest. And in this case, again, hypothetically, he certainly had the time, if not the opportunity, to six link months. up. Six months. So, right, it, it, it'll be it, absolutely compelling and critical to find out if there was a link up. The degree, if training, and, and probably most importantly here, was he tasked and dispatched like a Faisal Shahzad, the Times Square bomber? Indeed. Bob McFadden, as ever, thanks so much. Bob. My pleasure.